Hey, it's Joe Klein from Automator, and uh, in this video, we're going to cover what we automated in the last week. It really should be the last two weeks, because last week I, I recorded this video, but the audio somehow got turned off um, in OBS, so sorry about that. But uh, let's go ahead and jump into this. Now, I'm going to start off a little differently here. I'm going to show, um, right now, this is just site, and I, what I wanted to do is I'm going to use Prompt Assistant to launch my webcam reminder. Now, this is a script. It's a V1 script, but I'm going to have one of the guys convert it to V2, because it's really basic. But what's really cool, as you can see, um, what I'll do is I'll put it up and I'll put it up behind, like I'll put it right there. And what's cool is I can see this, but you can't. Now it does two things is one, I'm gonna grab this because this is something I wanted to talk to. Well, I should have copied it on my clipboard now and paste. So now on my screen, you can't see this because it's there um, are these notes, right? And what's cool, is um, it also reminds me not to put things up here because it's very easy to forget that your webcam is covering a certain area of your screen. And that's what this does, is even though it's a cheat sheet for me, it also reminds me if there's something there, you guys can't see it. So um, it's a double win. So if you're recording anything with OBS or doing Zoom stuff, it's, it's very handy for that kind of thing. Um, and the first thing I'm going to start off with, when we were having a conversation with uh, Danny, our, one of our radiologist clients, and... It was a very cool conversation because he's like, guys, normally um, we do around 70 um, RBUs. The relative billable units is the norm, I guess. If you're doing that, you're doing well, right? And they um, apparently get paid often by the number of billable units that they perform each day. And they said normally 70. Most people say that if you do 80, you're burning out, right? Um, at his previous place where he was doing before he met us he his high point was doing 101 um, on any given day and that he said was amazing and now after working with us we've been revising his scripts and, and he's coming up with the ideas we just implement for him he did 140 so he's doing basically double what the average person does right so he's just kicking butt um anyway it's a really cool story because um we've moved them from 101 up to 140 which basically you know if, if that was a percentage it's, it's looking great right um so with us you know yeah he spent a fair amount of money with us customizing his stuff but once now we we basically do a call eh, once or twice a week for an hour or two hours um and so it's not a lot of work anymore right but he's just tweaking things but it was really cool that we have helped him that much and he and that he has hard numbers to track so that's very very cool okay so the other thing which i should have done and that as a good point of this is i might have to remember to do this to fix the script so it doesn't adjust it is i'm going to change the dpi now i have a, a resolution one um hotkey but i'm going to bump the dpi and what that does is wherever my mouse is it will adjust the dpi and that's how now suddenly this got bigger right so that's why i don't think i want that one if the dpi changes i don't actually want it to change sizes but um and i'll put the link up there for this one because it's very very cool we'll be in a lot of calls where we're sharing a screen and i'll tell isaias hey you know dump up the dpi now if you're in a editor you can often control scroll right and that'll zoom in and out now that doesn't work like in a window like this this one i tried it but during the hero call last week we wrote a little custom code to go check what the font size was at first and then when you hold down control and scroll up, it increments it, and it did it live without even redrawing the GUI. It was really cool. Um, I'll try to remember to go make a script about that, showing how we did that, because that was really cool. But that was one of the fun things, if you're on a hero call, where we just come up with ideas and just share things with our, our members. All right. So now I'm going to launch Prompt Assistant and go to, let's see, our tool, well, tools and recently modified. Now, I have no idea... Um, how many we've modified in the last like i said i should edit the script and make it two weeks to see if we missed stuff but let's i'm not going to worry about that this is really what we automated last week so um this tooltip timer this is a cool little script we actually showed it during the hero call because as i mentioned the radiologist danny he um they have a certain amount of time in um for doing stuff and he's he's forcing himself that hey if after like a minute or two minutes if he hasn't taken action, it pops up with a timer, kind of letting him know, hey, you're taking longer than expected. Like, is this okay? And it just helps him keep focused, right? Which it's very easy to lose track of time and what you're working on. So that's a cool little script we wrote for him. Those those two there. Um, one of our other clients 
asked if we could take a file that he got from a, it was an Excel Macintosh file, and if we could convert it to text. He also got it as a PDF and converted it to text. Well, we, we used a PDF to text script. However, I asked ChatGPT if it could do it, and it said no, but um, there are, what were they called? Dot numbers, if I remember the extension. Um, it said that's a Mac file and there's an online converter. So I used the online converter and it did it beautifully, dumped it out and I gave it back to our client within minutes and didn't charge him because you know we don't we don't charge people for little stuff like that. Um the CDO sender. Someone wrote me and they're like, Hey, I downloaded your email sender and it's V1 and it, you know, do you have a V2 version? And I'm like, you know, we, we have a lot of email senders. Uh this CDO, I forget what the CDO stands for. It's been so long. It's a really old com object. But we had a Gmail example, and the V1 still works. But um, I asked Irfan to convert it to V2, which probably be Monday or Tuesday. We'll get that done. It's just cool. You can log in, and you can put in the mail servers, right? So you can send email from almost any email server if you have your uh, SMTP uh, server IDs and, and things. Pet username, password, and uh, the port. Anyway, that's pretty JSON. Um, this one actually is it's pretty cool if you have a JSON object. Um, I wanted something where I could just select the text and hit a hotkey and have it make it pretty so it's easier to read, make it, um, like, stringify it and unstringify it, make it clean it up. And so, uh, as Irfan made that for me. Um, we also have one for encoding and decoding the URL, which maybe should be in here. Um, I'm not sure because I don't think we actually edited it last week, so maybe that's not in here. Irfan was also... We're working on this really cool script that um, a hero member mentioned. He mentioned that the... Um, voice to text functionality because microsoft bought nuance um, which also owns uh dragon naturally naturally speaking and stuff uh they've in if you have the windows 11 version of um the 22h the big update that happened you know not too long ago then you now have this built-in um functionality windows voice access i forget um and it's sort of okay in its own terms, but I really, really didn't like their GUI, neither did any of the guys that we were playing with it. So we're making our own tool to make it user-friendly and where it, you can bind it to say, if I say computer run, you know, like a certain script, it will go and launch that script. Now I have to have bound that, right? But um, what's cool, unlike before when I did this years ago, it's highly accurate. It doesn't have a bunch of false flags and whatever, so it's really, really cool. It's also very fast, so that's um, we're working on that. That should be out next week, I think, even though I think our fans take a Monday off. Um, we, we During the Hero Call, we, we mentioned our um, Notify class and did a couple examples, because it's a great example if you're new to classes. It's actually a class, but you can call it like functions, and it's, it's really cool. This resizable GUI, that was, you know what? Let me see. Just curious if this is the actual file that we we worked on. If we added the hotkey in there, yeah, okay. Let's um pop this open. This now is a V two script. I'm just gonna run it. And so now, if I control scroll down and scroll up, right, we're zooming in and out. That's the. This was our resizable GUI. Now that hotkey is not in there yet, right? But this here, you can see the code right here. That's what um. And there might be some other code. I don't remember. Let's see. Yeah, it's set font. Um, and because I think we had to store size. I don't think that was um, in our initial thing. So we had to make that global, if I remember correctly. So it's global or size edit. Up here, but I'll try to remember to update the download for that if you guys are interested in that. I think that's just a really cool functionality because um, I realize how often I'm used to just scrolling, holding down control and scroll in and out. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. Why don't we have that in our auto hotkey edit windows? Like, why not, right? Let's make that simple. So um, it was a very cool example. As I did it live, I kind of surprised him with it. But um, yeah, I'm glad we worked that out. Uh, this search and replace, that should not have been updated. That's funny. Um, but it, it it's something I use for the newsletter. And this list manager, um, Isaiah and I, we... We, which actually I want to bring up, you know, our downloads now, we switched them to where everything, like you have to pay a dollar to get it or six dollars for the year, right? It's a subscription, but um, the stuff that people would put into their email addresses and call me names. And there were a few people that complained saying that it should be free. I'm like, we spend our, I, I pay these guys full time, you know, each week. I spend thousands of dollars on payroll each month for these guys to work and we normally, you know, have very low cost to free stuff that we're giving away, right? 
So for me to ask for a dollar to download a script, I don't think is too much. But anyway, um, it was really, we did it because of the, it was two things. One was the vile stuff people would put in there. You know, F you, Joe, is the nicest one, probably. Um, but mostly, but a lot of people gave us the real email address and real name. But there's a lot of other ones. And then the other one was when they would put in a bad email, well, of course, our servers try to send to it, and then we get flagged as spammers, right? So that was the other one. I wanted to avoid that. So that's what um, we did some work. And we actually identified some of the scoring things. This and that. We used Mailgun with API calls to s send the newsletter and all of my emails, for that matter. But um, for sending the, the newsletter, and um, it wasn't cleaning it up. So we did some stuff to now automate cleaning up the emails, removing bounces, hard bounces um, that are, you know, not just a soft bounce where maybe their mailbox was full for a short, short amount of time. Anyway, so um, Isaiah spent a lot of time working on that. Change the status. This is uh, where we update their deliverability on the newsletter up in WordPress. Um, and then we have another script that can just check before we send it. We'll go and pull that and see if they're okay to send. Also look at the last week's hard bounces. So that's another one, which actually I got to go run that one. We, we added a new one to, because in Mailgun, I pay roughly 40 bucks a month just for sending emails, right? And this is where I say, like, not only do I pay the guys, but I also have these hard, you know, expenses for the website, for a lot of other software. Um, but we're, um, our tool alone for the licensing and stuff is several hundred dollars a year. Anyway, um, so the Pretty Links tool now, the, this... We can uh, send the emails. Where was I in here? Um, oh, check before sent. So it will go. We only have five days of logs on the bounces. Um, well, any any sort of transactions, whether you open the email, click the email, whatever, or um, it bounced. We have five days. So I can't wait until the next week. I have to run it a couple days after to see who bounced. And then we check that and then go, hey, if it's a hard bounce and it says it's a you know, permanent bounce, we'll go unsubscribe them on our newsletter. So we stop trying to send to that. And then again, we can stop being flagged as spammers. Um, this pretty client link, pretty cool. Let me hit it here. So I'll hit a hotkey and here's all I can search. And I was searching apparently for regex. Let's say um, re resize, resizable GUI. Now, if I double click this, it'll give me that Pretty link. Now it's on my clipboard. I don't know if you saw the little notif tool tip there, but uh, it's on my, my clipboard and I can go paste that somewhere. And what was cool was now I can come in here and I can add a link. So I can give it a title and the slug, which is just the short name, the, the URL is the long name and where I want to go and a description if I want to. And what's really cool is this goes to our, when I hit submit, it connects um, via MySQL to our WordPress database for the automator and adds that, um, checks another box that should have been on there, but it connects a couple tables. Anyway, I don't have to go log into the website to do this. So I can do it very, very quickly, uh, create a pretty link, which is really cool because I can have tracking on it and see who clicks it. Well, more not who necessarily, but how many people click it which is really handy if you're trying to figure out what works and what doesn't work. Auto unsubscribe. I think that's the one actually where we, we go and move people out. Um, bonus, apparently we have a bonus. I'm not sure what that is. Newsletter tools bonus. I don't know what that is. Uh, database, so this is just some updates to our, our newsletter. Uh, the the mail gun a queries that we do. Here's uh, the webcam reminder, which I had put put under for Rizwan to work on to convert to V2 um, once he's he's uh, taking a little bit of a break. So here's another fun thing. So um, Rizwan, you know, the Irfan and Rizwan are in Pakistan and um, Irfan's English is pretty darn good. It, it's easy to understand him and he understands me for the most part, usually. And so obviously even other English speaking people natively, they, there's always miscommunication in the world, right? Even no matter how good you are. And uh, Irfan's English is pretty good. Rizwan needed some work. And what I finally said was, you know what? For the long-term run, it's better that Irfan, or Rizwan, excuse me, stop trying to learn auto hotkey and learns English and focus for a couple of two to three weeks on just learning English alone because that, just like auto hotkey is, it will greatly, him learning English better, will greatly improve his performance and everything else he's doing, right? It's the same thing with auto hotkey, why you learn auto hotkey. Because you'll be much more productive if you stick to learning on hockey, right? So we gave him a little two, two, three weeks off to, um, not really off, we're paying him to learn English, right? It's just, to me, it's worth it because once he gets that down better, 
you'll be far better off at creating things and understanding properly exactly what we're saying. So yeah, that's what he's been doing. So anyway, that one's why it's not going to get converted right away. Startup screen. This was just a, an example for Irfan showed it. We showed that during the hero call. So he has an animated GIF with the A with the gear circling around it. And we're using that in a couple of our tools, but it's kind of cool when you start your program to have, especially if it's doing something else to have it do that. It's all the same thing. Hot key test voice access. So this is where we're doing the voice access stuff. Um, I'm going to, not share that right now. I don't know the state of it. It's getting pretty darn close. Probably next week we'll be able to share the script and demonstrate it in a good video on it working. So there's a lot of stuff on voice access. We built a little query tool as well so you can filter on it because their interface is horrible. You can't filter on it. You can't even edit things easily. It's it's not fun. It's, it's a really bad tool, but we're, we're happy we found it because we're going to like creating some stuff. The hero content. Um, we are working on a sale, I think June 20th, so from right now, it's 11 days from when I'm saying this, is the World Productivity Day. So we're working on sales uh, emails to go out for discounts for our, our courses in the Zoom window manager. Now this one, I actually ran it, I'm going to have to tell Irfan something changed. Now Zoom updated not too long ago, they greatly updated their interface, and they improved it, honestly. Like at first I didn't like it, but I realized that they made some really good changes. But we had a tool that would remember where the Zoom windows were, and would re if you hit a hotkey, it would reset them to where they where you wanted them, and it stopped working. And I think that's because of one of those big updates they did, and and that's what you know that's what happens is people you automate programs, but if they change that program, you have to go back and make edits. So hope you enjoyed that. Not a huge week last week. We've been working on that voice access a lot. Irfan spent like three days on that. Like I said, that's another example where I may not. I may charge more like $6 or $5.99 for that script because we spent, Irfan spent at least four full-time days. That's all he worked on, right? Like it, it's very easy besides my time and talking to Isaiah at times, right? It's, it's, uh, these things add up. So if you don't mind, if you can afford to donate or, you know, um, do whatever, it really helps us out. So have a great day. Thanks for watching. Cheers.